amidst all the hard work that Ronnie Shields did and bringing Rocky Juarez home to the draw with Chris John in the first fight, now he goes to work again because Shields also trains Juan Diaz. Marquez's trainer, Nacho Beristain, was the man who handled Oscar De La Hoya in his disastrous outing against Manny Pacquiao. Already the pressure from Diaz begins. Good straight left hand by Diaz, and the chopping left hook in the corner. And another left hook backs up Marquez against the ropes. Marquez hasn't found the counter-punching rhythm quite yet. As a matter of fact, Marquez has not been able to land to leave one clean blow yet. And Rose, I think Diaz has landed about three or four punches at this stage. Now Marquez begins to try to extend his jab. So far seems just a bit off balance in the face of Diaz's aggression. Diaz showing respect, but ripping Marquez with another left hook. Three body shots from Marquez. Diaz goes in with the right hand. This is going to be a hellacious war. Unlike a lot of fights between a younger and older fighter, in this case, the early rounds seem to favor Diaz, where he can take over with his energy and volume punching. Marquez relies on precision counter punches, which may tell later in the fight. Marquez works his way into the fight. Remember, down three times against Pacquiao in the first round of the first fight. Down in the second round of the second fight. Had trouble early against Casamayor. But in the middle rounds, he finds the rhythm, adjusts his game, and begins to go to work technically. What's impressive to me right now is Diaz's defense. He's been able to pick most of Marquez's punches and has found a way of getting, particularly his little short left jab through, to hit Marquez for the most part. I thought, I, I thought this is what we would see starting about the fourth round, but not in the first round. See, what I just saw over the last 15 or 20 seconds was Marquez land a couple of clean shots and then block everything Diaz had to throw over the, you know, by the ropes. Maybe he's already making adjustments. Well, Diaz's great brain power serves him well, not just in the college classroom. He's used it throughout his learning curve in the ring. And Marquez just might be the smartest fighter in the sport. So you're looking at great intellect as well as great athletic talent. to mention the well-known cultural Mexican tradition of willing to mix it up. And are they ever. What a big left hook by Diaz. Marquez trying to fire back, lands a right cross and a left hook. Round one is an all-out war. And they taunt each other. Where's the grease? Where's the Vaseline? Everything's okay. But he closed, it. he closed you up. Step back and go to the sides. Don't get up high. Stay down low. Use the jab. Get close. Keep, keep your punches going, all right? Okay, okay seconds out. Let's go. Let's go. Step in. Step in. What a sizzling round one. Copy box numbers. Marquez, 29 out of 95. Diaz, 31 out of 104. The 95 punch is thrown by Marquez, the most ever thrown in a round by Marquez in a fight tracked by CompuBox. Translation, he was forced to play Diaz's game. Absolutely, and when Diaz is exchanging, notice Diaz is punching straight through the middle with punches where he's really exerting his weight. And it, it, even though they weighed in the same, and I guess tonight Marquez weighed in more, but I just see the natural strength more with Diaz. And he's punching in a manner where he's forcing Marquez to back up by pushing his punches straight forward and pushing his weight at the same time. And by the way, with the sole exception of his one loss in the Campbell fight, Diaz's stamina across the long course of the fight has always been amazing to behold. So don't expect much of a slowdown. If anything, if he gets his chance, he might crank it up a little more. But now the pace slows a little bit in the second round as Marquez begins to add more variety to his game. You saw the left-hand uppercut. Body shots by Diaz. 
I get the hunch that Marquez is going to need to stay off the ropes, Emmanuel. Yes, and I don't think he's going to do that. And then later, and Diaz is punching. He's got his head down more. Well, he's getting better leverage in the exchanges, and Marquez's head is up more. And this crowd is on its feet already, and they may be on their feet all the way. You notice Diaz is not throwing that many hooks. He's shooting his punches straight where he can maximize his strength. Big left hook. Staggers Marquez. Marquez in trouble and trying to fight his way out of it. And we've seen this from Marquez before when he's stunned, and he was stunned there. His instinct is to fire right back. Maybe the truest mark of a real champion. But he's in with a bigger man this time, you guys, and I can see the difference in the strength right here. If Diaz had world-class power for the weight, Marquez might have been gone right there. It was an unbelievable shot. But if Marquez continues to fight back. His punching power is not that bad. I would, you know, he still may possibly stop Marquez. Uh, at least knock him down. You saw that instinct that I mentioned from Morales and Barrera in this last featherweight golden era. And I think Marquez has the same thing inside him. In fact, if you wanted to find a comparison for what round one looked like, it looked like a round out of a Morales Barrera fight. And so does this one. I, I, I like Diaz's defense for the most part, which I'm surprised. They're both going to land more than 30 punches in the round. Big left hook by Diaz, straight right hand by Marquez. Good left hook by Marquez on the top of Diaz's head. Diaz jabbing and hunting. Marquez going to the body and coming back up. Missed the right hand. What a round. Me a boxing round this round, okay? Okay? I want you to relax for me now, okay? Now listen, don't let this guy out jab you, okay? See, this whole thing is he's trying to out jab you, okay? Don't let him out jab you. Look, you're coming up a little bit too high. We gotta stay down and we gotta move to keep the head moving, okay? But everything else is good. When you get close, keep sticking, keep sticking him with that jab, go to the body, okay? But look, this round here, I really want you to concentrate on that jab this round, okay? Here we say Diaz driving in, as we call him, left hook right there, and had probably more effect than it, it, it would have had, except for, because he had him back and back. And he's maximizing his weight on every punch by lunging forward as he punches. Happy box numbers in the second round. Marquez 34 out of 94. Diaz 30 out of 98. So if the first round was the largest number of punches Marquez has ever thrown in a coffee box counted round, the second round was the second largest number of punches ever thrown in a coffee box counted round. They're still basically playing Diaz's game. Marquez is a very intelligent fighter, though. If there is any mistakes in Diaz's arsenal, you can be sure that Marquez is going to find him out as the fight goes on. Oh, I think very intelligent is an understatement. Yes. He's a supremely intelligent fighter. Yes. He's blessed with excellent reflexes and very good punching power, but you have to wonder about those reflexes at the age of 35. And particularly given the wars he's been in. And a guy's had as many terrific fights against great opponents as Marquez has had. Every once in a while, they go off the diving board all at once. But he's looked really good in the first couple of rounds against a guy who's looked just a tiny bit better. Yeah, but the guy put a lot of pressure. I don't think Marquez, this pressure is going to probably negate a lot of his counter-punching better because it's making him fight at a faster pace than he likes to fight at. For the uppercut. Marquez threw the uppercut from a little too far away. He's going to have to get closer to do it right. Good straight jabs by Marquez there, momentarily stopping Diaz in his tracks. And tracks they are as Juan stalks and stalks. Four punch combination by Diaz. This is the Juan Diaz that had the boxing world buzzing before his loss to Nate Campbell. Well, 
Wow. What a win. What determination. Good luck took by DX. So Mark Hayes is landing punches, but the, the way that Diaz is piling in with his weight is making his punches look more effective because he's forcing Mark Hayes to lose his balance. But even though Mark, Mark Hayes is landing punches just as good sometimes. Good right hand by Marquez. Right behind Diaz's guard and on the ear. Real fighters love this. They love this kind of competition. A lot of Marquez advocates thought this might be man against boy. So far, it's been man on man in a fight for a man Okay. Monday night, a brand new event, the BNP Paribas Showdown for the Billie Jean King Cup. One night of live women's tennis featuring the Williams sisters, Yelena Yankovic and Anna Ivanovic. <laughs> You've got to throw the punches. Throw the punches, make him miss. Come on. Uppercut with the left shot. And finish off with the hook to the to the liver. Keep using that good jab, though, OK? Stay with that good jab. Double and triple that jab. Every now and then fade him and come right back. Both hands, OK? Let's dig that body. Here you see Diaz coming in, pushing his punches forward with four fours. And also, you see Punches coming back from Marquez, which are counter punches, but it don't create the excitement because he's not forcing Diaz to back back, but he's still landing clean, effective punches. Zombie box numbers through round three. Marquez 91 out of 268. Diaz 87 out of 281. Harold, how do you have it so far? Look at you. Three rounds to nothing. 30 to 27. One Diaz. Jim, one quick thing about our last fight. I absolutely can't remember the last time I saw three judges score for the draw. Very, very rare. Back to this fight. Juan Diaz keeps walking him down, landing clean, hard, effective shots. And when he gets Marquez on the ropes, Marquez seems to lose his head and stand there and slug with Diaz. And that's how Diaz wants to fight. Juan Diaz landed more clean shots just like this right there. Three to nothing, Diaz. You know, I understand that score. And Diaz is imposing his kind of fight. But I'll tell you the truth, guys. I think Marquez is landing the harder punches. Well, I think he might be a harder puncher, but of course, Diaz, as we pointed out, is by nature the bigger man and more of a natural lightweight. Uh, Emmanuel, what is Marquez going to do to take away Diaz's left hook, which is landing with ferocious regularity? Uh, I mean, I've been impressed by the left hook, which I'm surprised, especially, you know, most of the guys from Mexico block the left hooks very well, but I think he's going to have to try to just block the punch and counter punch at the exact same time, and I don't know if he can do that. He needs to, whenever he sees Marquez, I mean, Diaz throwing a hook, he needs to block it and shoot his counter hook at the exact same time. Diaz has been brilliant so far at finding those moments when Marquez's right hand is slightly dropped. He's landed several plus left hooks. Yeah, and he gets maximum level. He hunches his body forward in a Joe Frazier type style, where his left hook has tremendous force because he has his weight leaning right into the position where he can load up on the left hook. But look at the comeback combination by Marquez. A four-punch, counter-punch combination. Awesome stuff.
Okay? Come on, I need that head side to side head move. Okay? Listen, relax and take it. Relax, okay? Everything is going good for you, okay? Listen, you gotta use the jab. The jab is the most important thing you have. But you gotta step in with it. Don't fall in with it, okay? Okay? No, everything is going good, baby. Everything is going good. Just keep that head. Where's the Vaseline? Where's the Vaseline? Come on, you put some punches in there. Put your punches in there. He's opening his mouth already. Here you say Diaz land his beautiful left hook. Evidently, Marquez cannot feel the left hook when it's coming. He's reaching out for it as if it was maybe a jab coming in, and instead he's getting caught with that left hook continually. In round four, Marquez gained just a little bit of an edge in copy box numbers, 38 out of 96, as opposed to 30 of 86 for Diaz. And for the first time in the fight, Harold Letterman sees a round in Marquez's favor. I also thought Marquez landed the most effective punches towards the end of that round. I agree with you, Matthew. He just doesn't get the credit for because, you know, he doesn't move Diaz back where when Diaz lands a punch, he always forces Marquez's head and his body to move back. But Marquez is landing a lot of clean, effective combination, particularly at the end of the round. Diaz is trying to follow in the footsteps of boxing greats like Jake LaMotta, Jeff Fennick, and others who were great pressure fighters, even though they weren't big punchers, but they were able to establish themselves with their volume of punching and their physical strength. Imposing his will against Marquez on the ropes and catches him again with a left hook as Marquez steps away. Now Marquez will look to land a three or four punch combination and he nails Diaz with two uppercuts in a row. Both from the left side. Straight right hand down the pipe by Diaz. Lands twice in a row. Whoever throws more body punches may ultimately be the winner in the fight. Well, I tell you what, this is going to be a tough fight by the Another huge left hook by Diaz. I mean, these guys are fighting at a pace and, and putting such mustard on each shot and fighting at a skill level. You rarely see all those elements combined. Big in a body fight. shot by Marquez. And, you know, referee Rafael Ramos has not had to break these guys up for one clinch at all that I can remember. I didn't even know he was on the ring. No, nope, they're just fighting their way straight through the fight. You know, not to say it's quite on that level yet, but in certain ways it's reminiscent of Corrales and Castillo. No the number clinches. Of bombs that are being landed. I guess not, but no clinches, a fast pace, hard shots, high skill level. Unclear who will ultimately impose their will. That fight was in 2003, I believe, on our competing, our competitor network, Showtime. One difference, maybe those guys were slightly heavier punches, but neither of them had the volume that these guys are producing tonight. Good left hook by Diaz. And there's blood above the corner of Marquez's right eye. And I was just about to say, Emmanuel, whose face can hold up? Whose features will hold up under all this level? Let's go to the head. Please. Where's the grease? Where's the Vaseline? Juan. Juan, wait. Let me work the let me work the cut. I'm winning. You're winning, but very little. By very little. You see the referee looks like he changed sides on him.
Marquez has been cut in that same spot before. Yes. Yes. Against both Manny Pacquiao and Joel Casamayor. Nacho Beristain has worked that cut before and he's working it again tonight. Yes. Diaz was cut badly in the Campbell fight. But other than that, his features have held up very well despite his non-stop high pressure style in other fights. Yes. Another big left hook by Diaz. I mentioned the body shot disparity. I believe it's Marquez, really, who's thrown more body shots early and is landing them at a high rate. Blood begins to trickle again from the cut just outside Marquez's right eye. There, Diaz got in a solid body shot against the ropes. Marquez is beginning to become more conscious of trying to block Diaz's left hook. Diaz is adjusting by going to the body instead. If Marquez is not setting a trap when he's retreating to the ropes, that's a very good sign for Diaz. But I was very impressed by the point that you mentioned, Jim, that he's been able to neutralize Diaz's left hooks lately. He has not been hit with any of those left hooks. And that's a sign of a very intelligent fighter. Marquez, even the crowd is excited, but, but Marquez is landing most of the cleaner blows in those exchanges. There. Diaz eats a hard right hand, lands a hard right hand, takes a hard right hand. Crowd rises to its feet again. Look, don't let this guy rest, okay? Don't let him rest. Don't let him rest. Okay? Look, you're not stepping with that jazz though, baby. Okay? Give me a deep, give me a deep one. Deep one. Let him out slow. Again, deep one. Let him out slow. No. What is it? Seventh round. It's the seventh round. Don't go to the ropes, son. Just move your head. Don't let him build. Don't let him build, okay? That's the I want yellow Vaseline. <coughs> Don't expose yourself, Juan. Come on, in the center of the ring. Throw the combinations, beautiful combinations. And then move. Can anybody believe we're already halfway through the fight? What a pace. Power punches through six rounds. Marquez, 128 out of 290. Diaz, 122 out of 369. I mentioned the body shots. The advantage there so far, Marquez, he's landed 30 to 23 for Diaz. Harold, that's not really how fights are scored by judges. How do you have it? No, Jim, four rounds to two. 58, 56, one Diaz. Jim, one man will Marquez really ought to stay off the ropes. When he goes on the ropes, Juan Diaz just pummels him like you're watching right here. When a fight goes into the center of the ring, one man will, one man will, one man will Marquez does very, very well. But he ought to stay off the ropes. He's given Diaz the advantage of that effective aggressiveness and, yeah, and using his size by going up on the ropes. Four to two, one Diaz. Here's an amazing statistic, guys. Through six rounds of this fight, and despite the fact that Marquez twice went 12 rounds with Manny Pacquiao, Juan Diaz has already thrown more power punches against Juan Manuel Marquez than anybody has ever thrown against him in a 12-round fight already. Standards of this fight, Diaz took a breather in the sixth, something that Ronnie Shields noted in the corner, 
and told him to correct. Ronnie hadn't had to work quite as hard here as he did in the Rocky Juarez Chris John fight that preceded this. And he'll be trying to steer his man down the stretch for sure. Straight right hands landing for Juan Manuel Marquez. Lands again for Diaz. Left hook, left hook, body shot. Left hook to the body, all by Juan Diaz. Now Marquez tries to come back. I don't know if Marquez is going to be able to maintain all the way through, you know, because he, he throws a lot of punches, but the fights with Pacquiao, he had a lot of in-between time. Diaz is pushing him a lot more. And his mouth is open, Emmanuel, and he's breathing past his mouth guard. And it looks as though the stamina advantage is beginning to show for the baby boy. Marquez has fought a bit with his mouth open since the third round. Uh, the pace is something, as you noted, Jim, that he's not used to. But he's landing a lot of clean blows. You don't get the reaction from the crowd that's whenever Diaz is in, but he's landing a lot of clean blows still. Especially in the middle of the ring, as yeah. Harold mentioned. Yeah. Two straight right hands by Marquez. Two more big left hooks by Diaz. Drives Marquez back against the ropes. Lands a straight right hand of his own. Marquez trying to counter again. Diaz keeping the pressure on. He listened to Ronnie between rounds. He's not going to let the Mexican rest. Everything, watch his face, watch his face. Nice smart, Juan. Listen, mm -hmm. I, I, you still got to stay close to him, but look, all we got to do, Juan, you still, in the, in the inside, we got to move his leg. Got to move it. I mean, you got to move your head in the inside, okay? okay. Just move your head yeah. and give it a deep breath. No. You're boxing good, okay. son. Okay? You're boxing good. But you... Okay. Move in the middle. In the middle. Get to the middle. In the middle. You're beating him down. Don't go to the ropes. That's on his favors. In the middle. In the middle. You're beating him. Here you can see the intensity of the furious exchanges that they have when you see the punches are landing. Short punches, sweat flying, shows the type of a fight. Just a lot of excitement, a lot of hard punches. Copy box numbers in the seventh. Marquez 35 out of 70, landing half his blows. Diaz 34 out of 91. Again, they're still playing mostly Diaz's game. And that's showing up on Harold Letterman's scorecard. You've heard the crowd. You've seen the energy. In January, it was a tremendous crowd in Staples Center in Los Angeles for Shane Mosley's whacking of Antonio Margarito. Last Saturday night, big crowds in Madison Square Garden and Youngstown, Ohio for Miguel Cotto and Kelly Pavlik. Now this, economic conditions are helping to bring boxing back to its roots and fans are responding. And now there's a cut outside Diaz's right eye. And the left uppercut from Marquez, which has been maybe his most effective punch. Along with the straight right hand. So they're equal in cuts now. Marquez is having a strong rally in the first minute of the eighth round. There comes the uppercut again. He's trying right to, in a row. He's trying to hold with that left uppercut between the gloves. Diaz isn't landing many of these. No. But he's asserting his energy again. Good job of blocking punches there by the baby bull. That cut could pose a problem between rounds for Joe Chavez again. You saw the job that Chavez did with Rocky Juarez's cut in the first fight. He'll have to go to work on Diaz That's between right, rounds. Same thing as, you know, Marquez is fighting for the pride of his country. You know, even though they're both supposed to be Mexican, right now, Marquez is saying that he would die in the ring and leave all the blood that he has in his body has to for his country in this fight. Because he considers Diaz a half Mexican. He's an American Mexican. What action. This is amazing. Marquez is a good defensive fighter, but Diaz overwhelms his defense, overtaxes it with the sheer volume of his punches. Even as Marquez sharpshoots and continues to land the flush of harder shots. And 
And as the blood flows, the urgency level rises. And you can see now, look like the expression on Diaz's face has changed somewhat. And Marquez's confidence level is starting to grow now. Diaz did not respond well to the cut against Nate Campbell. He's cut in a similar kind of dire way here against Marquez. Well, we told you how Marquez adjusts yep, and comes Mar on. Mar and he's Mar Diaz. Mar Diaz got caught with a left hook and he looks stunned. 25 seconds to go. Can the great technician find yeah. a way? Diaz, Diaz with a left hook to back him off. That left hook was about as clutch a punch as Diaz could possibly have thrown. And you know, Marquez is an experienced fighter, and he can handle getting into trouble, but I don't know if Diaz can handle that, because he has not had that type of experience. Everybody's up. Give me that mouthpiece. Sorry. Give me a drink. Listen, you got to use the jab, all right? Listen, use your feints on him now, okay? Don't give him too much distance, though. Okay? Okay? Don't stand right in front of this man. Here you see Marquez mixing up his punches, punches to the outside and between the gloves. I think that left uppercut between the gloves right there was a shot that caused the cut. You can see the blood just start to spurt as soon as he landed that left uppercut. And here is the left hook that he catches with the head, which he just simply didn't see the punch. And it's a, it's a punch that hurts is always one you didn't see. Because he thought he had blocked it, but it came in the back in the back of the gloves. It still came through. Now for the first time, the test is going to be how can Diaz have adversity? The eighth round was a huge round for Juan Manuel Marquez. 40 out of 85 by CompuBox numbers. Diaz landed only 18 out of 70. Harold Letterman's scorecard begins to tighten. Marquez making his patented mid-round rush. He's the heavier-handed fighter, and he's the more accurate puncher. And it's starting to take its toll on Diaz. Another CompuBox milestone. Marquez has now landed more punches in the fight than he's ever landed in a fight counted by CompuBox. I got a feeling they're gonna smash every possible CompuBox record for these two fighters tonight. While they smash each other's faces. Exactly. What an amazing adjustment Marquez made, Emmanuel, in about the yeah. third or fourth round to find that uppercut and start to hammer away at it with two and three uppercuts at a time. Very smart, smart fight. He's made great adjustments. And I thought this time he would be watching, but as he's turning around, He's back in the fight, and Diaz is starting to be up right now, seeing a little bit. You know, it's interesting when Diaz had his first professional fight, he was in Mexico. He met Marquez, and they became friends for that night. And Marquez said he never would dream at that time, especially being that he was only 16, that he would end up fighting with Diaz. He said he was Put such a nice Put kid, so warm, so personable. They're taunting each other in the ring. <laughs> Great left hook by Diaz. He's trying to turn the tide through the sheer force of will. In between all of us, the referee still is not to have a break. One Christmas means if anyone gets seriously hurt in this fight, they're probably going to get stopped. All credit to the referee. Because they when if he stops catch. it, it'll be the first thing he's done in the fight. Though Marquez is the much more experienced, in fact, it's Diaz who's had more experience fighting at this pace over the course of the fight. And he's 10 years younger. And he's fighting in his hometown. And he's supposedly the stronger man. And he's hurt. A huge uppercut. Down goes Diaz. Well, let's say all of us. He doesn't know how to clinch. Can he make it out of the ring? 35 seconds to go. A very brave Juan Diaz will probably go back to fighting. A spirit fighter would probably clinch, but I don't think that's what he's going to do. And look at Marquez go to the body. Look at him go to the body and try to set up the finish. And what a right hand. And that will be that. What you just saw 
was a really good young fighter, knocked out by a great old fighter. Absolutely. And you're pound for pound number one. Maybe. Oh, yes. Just my No, be. that's what you said, and you have good grounds to say that. Well, let me say this. That's as sensational as any performance Manny Pacquiao's ever produced, for sure. No discredit to Pacquiao, who is great. Marquez is just as great. That was the first knockdown. Okay. Here's the another look at the first knockdown, Emmanuel. Right hand, but what amazed me was the precision and the accuracy of the punches from Marquez. He didn't miss too many punches, and he was punching from all angles, even as he was twisting and turning. The mark of an experienced fighter. A straight right hand, and then the uppercut produced that first knockdown. The second knockdown is really almost a formality on a brilliant right uppercut. The one thing that Mark set up did, by the body shots. Mark has mixed up his punches. So he threw punches over the top and then he threw punches up underneath. The sheer is, professionalism yes, of the knockout, an amazing thing. And if ever you wanted an example of how to finish by going to the body first and setting it up upstairs, that was it. Textbook stuff. Well, he was a favorite going into the fight, and he proved it to say the experts right. Well, and I, I was speaking to one expert last night who picked Marquez, and at the end of the day, his rationale was, he's just a better fighter. And I think this fight showed that. Yeah, I thought that Diaz would have been able to pull it off. From the beginning of the fight, it showed that way, but Marquez came back and turned the fight around. Very, very smart fighter. Let's hear the particulars on the knockout from Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, before we give the official time, a round of applause for these two blood and guts lightweight warriors in this ring here tonight in Houston. The official time, two minutes, 40 seconds, round number nine. The winner by knockout victory, Still Ring Magazine, world champion, and now WBA, WBO, and IBO unified, lightweight champion of the world, Juan Manuel Dinamita. Final CompuBox numbers in an astonishing show by both fighters. Marquez landing 36 more, throwing 49 fewer, landing at a significantly higher percentage, ultimately picking Diaz apart with the brilliance of his offensive repertoire. Power punches. Marquez landing 29 more. Look at that. Juan Diaz to 500 power shots. Marquez landing 47%. And many times we've told you over the years, if a fighter is landing half or close to half of his power shots, he is going to win the fight. Let's go to Max Kellerman now with the winner, Juan Manuel Marquez. The great Juan Manuel Marquez, congratulations on a terrific fight and a great win. How did you knock out Juan Diaz? Bueno, nosotros veníamos a trabajar combinaciones en el centro del ring, boxear. Es un golpeador que tira bastantes golpes, pero bueno, nosotros con nuestro cabeceo y a la vez los contragolpes nos sirvieron. We came to work, we came to box, to throw punches. He's a fighter who throws a lot of punches, but with our head movement and our body movement, we were able to evade those. He looked like early he was imposing his kind of fight on you. Is that what you felt was happening? Sí, la pelea iba pareja en los primeros tres rounds. Él se estaba queriendo imponer, tirando sus combinaciones con velocidad. Pero no, nosotros pudimos manejar la cintura, quitando unos golpes de, de Juan Díaz que tira combinaciones bastante rápidas, pero nosotros veníamos preparados a todo. I felt it was pretty even the first three rounds. Yes, he was throwing a lot of punches, but with our body movement, our head movement, we were taking punches off, we were picking them off, and I thought we had it. It seemed that though you were doing better and better throughout the fight, 
the knockout was sudden. Did you feel him weakening? Did you feel that the knockout was coming? Sentimos que desde el cuarto, quinto round estaba aflojando con los golpes al al cuerpo. Y bueno, yo creo que vimos el momento oportuno para noquear y así llegó. Since the fourth and fifth round, we saw that the punches were making him uh, tender to the body, and fortunately the knockout came. Okay, the business at lightweight seems finished. There's no dispute possible that you're not not only the lightweight champion, but the best lightweight in the world. Is your business at lightweight done? Do you plan on moving up, or do you plan on staying put and fighting some of the junior lightweights who are moving up? Yo creo que lo más factible en vez de bajar vamos a subir, vamos a subir y retar al mejor al mejor peleador que hay ahorita que puede ser Mayweather. Instead of going down or staying the weight, we're going to go up and meet Mayweather, which will be the best pound for pound. Floyd Mayweather. What makes you think Floyd Mayweather will fight you? Es un, porque es un porque es un gran peleador. ¿Para qué ya no quiere pelear conmigo? Él dice que es el mejor libra por libra, pero no. Yo quiero pelear con el mejor libra por libra que es Floyd Mayweather. He says uh, he's the best pound per pound, Pacquiao, but he really doesn't fight. Want to fight with me? So I want to fight the best pound per pound, and that would be Mayweather. Who would want to fight with you, Juan? Congratulations again.